So imagine this. George and his four mates are down the pub one Friday evening and they're chatting, having a few beers, and they decide that finally it's time for them all to get in shape. This is going to be the last time they go for beers on a Friday night, last time they have a kebab, they're all going to get in shape. It's almost the summer, they've got a holiday booked and they need those shreds ready for the beach. So George pulls out his phone, gets on Instagram and starts scrolling through all the different fitness pages, trying to find a fitness plan that they can all stick to together. And he thinks he's onto a winner because he finds one plan that's claiming that 80% of all of their customers that follow that plan to a T achieve a goal of losing five kilograms. So he's chatting to his mates and they're like, yeah, five kilograms will be pretty shredded. Maybe not you, Adam, you've been eating too many penguin bars, but the rest of us. So they decide that they're going to do this together. The five of them are going to follow this fitness plan. Now that 80% success rate obviously means that four out of five customers on average achieve that goal of losing five kilograms. But when we fast forward a couple of months and George and his four mates have completed this plan, well, only two of them achieved the goal. That's obviously a 40% success rate, which is half of what the website was claiming. Needless to say, George and his mates are pretty pissed off. They're blaming the website for them not being shredded and not looking their best when they're at Ocean Beach Club. It's a disaster, especially Adam. He's gone the opposite way. He's definitely not given up the kebabs. But their complaints aren't necessarily justified. You see, the 80% success rate that's being claimed by that Instagram page would have been based on a very, very large sample size of customers. Whereas George and his four mates, well, that's just a very tiny sample size of just five people. But that doesn't matter to our pal Georgie because he thinks that he has categorical evidence from them completing this plan that the website is lying and the success rate, the real success rate, is just 40%. So he still wants his refund. This is known as the law of small numbers, which is when people will make a generalization about something or assume the success of something based on a small amount of data. They underestimate the potential variability in such a small data set. And this bias is widespread in the financial markets from traders assuming their system is good or bad based on an insufficient number of trades to investment managers being held as the next big thing after only a few years of outperforming the markets. So rather than putting things into perspective and looking at the bigger picture, we can't help ourselves and we want to make these overall generalizations that we believe have been proven just from these small data sets. Now, in our everyday life, we do this with many different things, but there are some situations where falling into this bias can actually be really harmful to us and trading is one of those things. You see, when we're assessing our trading results, if we want to make an assumption about how good or bad our system is or our overall performance is, we need to look at a larger sample size. It can't just be on a few different trades. So instead, let's talk about the law of large numbers, okay? This is the opposite of the law of small numbers. The law of large numbers states that the average of the results from a large sample size should be close to the expected value. So in basic terms, what this means is that if you have a large enough sample size, the average results from that sample size should closely reflect reality. So with that in mind, we shouldn't be focusing on short-term streaks to determine how good or bad our trading system is. If we make a tweak and immediately see better performance in the market straight after this, this may actually fall into the category of the law of small numbers. We're making an assumption based on a very small data set. Instead, we need to find ways to gather much bigger amounts of data on our trading to truly determine how we're performing and what sorts of changes we may need to make to improve our overall system. And it really works. You see, at that point, optimization and making adjustments in your trading becomes much more logical and can have a dramatically better impact on your trading performance. Otherwise, you'll just be optimizing something and making assumptions based on data that isn't actually reflecting reality. I mean, let's think about this for a second, right? In our last video, I spoke about how we can start to calibrate our trading and how at halfway through the year, now we're at the halfway point of 2019, we can start to reflect on our trades. But let's say that those trades, you know, there aren't many of them, it's quite a small data set. And when analyzing those trades, 
you decide that you're going to make this big change, this dramatic shift in what you're doing, because you see from that data that if you would have done that, it would have given you better results. But from that small data set, you can't really tell what the reality would be in the long term. And it might just be that from following the exact same thing as you did up until that point in the year, if you did that over the long term, it would be much more profitable than following this change that you're making. So while I do encourage you to calibrate your trading and to optimize and all of that stuff, you also have to have some perspective about the amount of data you're looking at. If you've only got 10 trades, then you're going to be very limited in what you can do and it's going to be very qualitative. If you have a lot of data, then you can really dive in and start to figure out what it is that you need to optimize, what you need to improve. And if you're looking at your trades and realizing that you have a very small data set and not enough to really analyze, then let's not use the law of small numbers as an excuse. Instead, let's dive headfirst into backtesting. Now, backtesting isn't a direct replacement for live trading, not by any means, but it's definitely better than doing nothing. So get started with that. And if you're new to trading and you don't know what any of this means and you're not sure where to start, then head to the description box below and you'll find a link to join our free course. You're going to get 10 detailed lessons to learn the foundations of our method of trading, as well as interactive activities and quizzes to help keep you on track. And you'll see the weather's improved while I've been saying this bit because it knows that it's the right thing to do. Thanks a lot for watching guys. I'll see you in the next one.